What is up, Wholesale 2 Million Family? I'm going to share with you how I just bought this property right here for $280,000 when it's worth $590,000. I'm going to share with you the exact how I found it, what I'm planning to do with it, and how I'm going to make some money from it. So stay tuned. If you're looking to get started in wholesaling real estate and you want to make between $10,000 to $100,000 per month, then go to WTMFam.com. Check out one of my courses that I got for you. I'm going to give you the exact blueprint of how I went from zero to building a six-figure a month wholesaling business completely virtual. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to find distressed property from the freeway to the payway, how to find the cash buyer, how to talk, how to negotiate so you can lock property up in a contract completely over the phone and much more. If that sounds like something that you're interested interested in go to wtmfam.com and let's go get this money all right you guys so here is i'm just going to show you so this is the front of the house looks pretty nice that is the uh two-car garage so uh this property here it is a um it is a 2400 square feet three bedrooms two uh, i think two and a half bath i have never seen this property before and i don't recommend you to buy your first property sight unseen um for those of you who um who've been following the channel for a long time you know that i started out as a fix and flipper so i fix and flip for about four and a half uh four and a half years when i first started so I, so based off of pictures based off of uh the inspections the report um, and I got someone there to actually walk through the property to kind of give me kind of a layout so i kind of know exactly what i'm going to put into the property what it's going to be and how it's going to look afterward okay so that's why it is plus the price that i got it for versus how much the property is worth and the the spread that i have in there is just so big that i'm okay to buy this property sight unseen this property is actually only two and a half hours away from me. I could have just gone there, but I just decided not to just because I got some other stuff that's going on. And I decided just to pull the trigger and um, basically buy sight unseen. But once again, I don't recommend you do that. I typically likes to when I buy a property that I was going to keep and hold, I typically likes to go there and actually check it out myself. But in this case, this is it's the, the number just makes sense so much that I that the risk that I'm taking without seeing the property is versus, you know, buying it and um, and, and and the amount of money I'm going to have into it. I, I, I basically I know that um, it's not going to be where to the point where I'm going to lose money. OK, so um, anyways, I'm just going to get straight into it. And uh, <clears throat> so this is the company that I go to where I find property like this. Typically, when I get property, whether we're wholesaling it. Um, I'm also going to, to get into doing a lot of buy and hold um, just because it's offset my tax. And that's the one, another reason why I decided to, you know, to pull the trigger to buy this property and to hold just because the tax that I'm going to get hit with this year, is going to be so, so big that I need to buy some property to offset my taxes. So anyways, whether I'm wholesaling or I, I, I or I'm looking to find a discount property, this is the company that I use deals the number four me now.com or link is in the descriptions. Basically, this is my affiliate link with prop streams. Um, if you want to check them out, you get a seven days free trial with them. But this is where I go to pull my distress property list. In this um in this case, um this list here, um, this property actually falls on a list of high equity uh, owners. So whether they're absentee or they're not, just because of my budgets of how much money I have now to spend on marketing, we pull everything and anything that has at least a 40% in equity or more, and we just target them all. So whether they're absentee owner or not, whether they live there or they don't, um, you're built uh, typically 1997 or older, all right? Anything that's 1997 or older, uh, we hit them all and we hit our whole entire estate. So the owner calls us The owner calls us up and obviously came in contact with one of my VAs. For those of you who don't know VAs, they're virtual assistants. I have a team of eight VAs that does everything for me um, on my wholesaling business. Um, so um, we have five of them that filter and qualify the leads, whether they're cold calling or they're taking incoming call, um, but they filter and qualify the leads. And typically that's the one that actually takes uh, the longest. All right. Filter and qualify the lead. Cause basically, you just got to dig through the dirt um, to actually find, um, you know, obviously that motivated seller. 
So we did what we did when we did cold call and we did text blast. All right. So this seller came off of one of our cold calling. Um, so we pull, we go here. All right. Go to dealsformenow.com. We pull a list. After that, we just took the list and we go to kingkongskip.com. I just launched my own skip tracing um, service. Only eight cents per skip. Minimum, and minimum order is only $4. Okay. So go to kingkongskip.com. We just take that list. We upload it and we skip trace. And then my VA just pound the phone, cold call, came co in contact with the seller. She basically just want to move out of the property. Doesn't want to live there anymore. Um, it needs a lot of work and she just don't have the time or the money to do it and decided to, she just want a quick sell. So we locked this prop on the contract. I did my research. We sent a, um, after it's under contract, we sent a home inspector out there um, and, um, to look at the property. I suggest that if you're going to buy something, hold it, whether it's new constructions or a remodel, I highly suggest that you should just spend the extra 500 to seven, 500 to 700 bucks. All right, to get a home inspection so you know exactly what you're getting into. Um, so according to the inspection report, this house is basically, it needs a little bit more than just cosmetic work. Uh, there's some termites, rots that we need to uh, to do the repair, but the roof is good. Electrical plumbing, that probably needs to be updated. Um, sidings, windows, and and paint, and all of that. So um so we're uh, we're buying this property for two hundred eighty thousand dollars, and I'm going to share with you how I'm going to buy this property. So if you're in Washington State, there's a company called there's a, there's a company called <coughs> there's a company called Eastside Funding. Eastside Funding is a it's a hard money lending company that lends to people that are short terms. All right, going to rehab it, fix it, and either flip it or fix it and then refi, uh, refi it, okay? So I reached out to Eastside Funding, and we got a loan with them. And they they typically want you to put 10% down of the purchase price. So we're buying it for $280,000. So I have to put up $28,000 of my own money, all right, to buy this property. They're going to loan the rest at a 12% interest rate. So my monthly payment with them is uh, $2,500. Uh, $2, the term is six months long, all right? So six months, so within those six months, whatever I need to do, refi or sell the property, but I need to cash them out, all right? And every single month, I'm paying them a 12% interest, so roughly it's about 2,500 uh, bucks a month. Now, <coughs> sorry, sorry. Now, in the agreement, uh, we told the seller that we're gonna pay for all the seller closing costs. So typically, just know that if you're gonna offer to pay all the seller closing costs, it's roughly about close to 3% plus or minus of the purchase price. So out of pocket, I'm out of pocket around $39,000 and some change. So let's just say $40,000. So I came out of pocket $40,000 to buy this property, all right, uh, for $280,000. And I'm going to spend about, I would say, $50,000 into this property to fix it up and to put in perfect condition again. And then, so, um, so 280. Um, so basically, after everything said and done with getting the loan and all that, I'm at, I, I'm roughly at 300,000. So 300,000 plus another 50,000 I'm going to spend to rehab this property. After I, I'm done rehabbing the property, it's going to worth about $590,000. And I'm going to share with you now exactly how I'm going to recoup my money and how I'm going to plan, what I'm planning to do with this property. So after it's completely fixed up, um, the wife and I are thinking we're going to Airbnb this property. All right. So it's not in a great location, um, but we ran some numbers. And um, instead of doing the long term, we're going to try some Airbnb because it seems like it works really well for a lot of our friends that are also in the real estate business, and they said Airbnb are killing it, but it also comes down to is location. Um, it's, once again, this property is not in a prime location for Airbnb, but uh, it'll probably make me <coughs> more money than long than rent it out long term. So uh, we at we thinking that we're probably going to net about thirty five thousand dollars. All right, thirty five thousand dollars. All right. If we Airbnb this property, so thirty thirty five thousand dollars a whole entire year. All right, uh, if we Airbnb it now, this property after I fix it up, I'll be so I'll be all in on this property for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. After that, it's going to worth about five hundred and ninety thousand dollars. And a lot of you will, will wonder, well, Kong, how do you know it's going to worth five ninety? So.
typically before I buy a property, I also run comps. Comps means comparable. So I'm looking at com com I'm looking at comparables property in the area. All right, how much property are selling for after it's fixed up nicely? And we and I found three comparables, and um, it all comes down to right around the five hundred and ninety thousand dollars after we uh, we uh, fix it up. So when you when you want to run comparables, you got to make sure bedroom, bathroom, square footage does it have a garage or not. All right, so got to be very so got to be apples to apples. Uh, so when you do compare, uh, when you run comparables, so so here's what I'm gonna do, okay? So I got six months to rehab. And to finish this property after it's been rehab, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go to the bank, one of my local bank that I've been work uh, that I work with, and I'm gonna do what's called cash out. Um, <coughs> I'm gonna do a cash out refi. So when you do a cash out refi, so now I'm talking about the burst strategy. So I bought the property. Next thing is I am gonna rehab it. All right, and then next thing is I'm gonna rent. Um, you know, after rehab it, then rent it out. But we're gonna keep this one as an Airbnb. So I am going to go to the bank and do a cash out refi. So when you do a cash out refi, um, if you have good relationship with the bank, depending on your credits, they typically loan you around between 75 to 80 percent on the appraised value. So let me do the math for you really quick. So if the property does come down to appraise for five hundred ninety thousand dollars and I'm just going to go conservative and say 75 percent. <throat> so it's at 75. So at 75 percent loan to. Okay, so five ninety. Times seventy five percent, which mean after it's all done, I can go to the bank. I'll do a cash out refi, which mean um, they now I'm gonna put a new loan on this property with a bank, not the harmony lender, with the bank, and they will loan me. Said I'm just gonna be conservative, seventy five percent on the appraised value. So if you take five hundred ninety thousand dollars times seventy five percent, that comes to four hundred and forty two thousand. So, which means I can put a new loan on this property for four hundred and forty-two thousand dollars. Now, if you take four hundred and forty, so the bank is going to loan me on this property. They're going to loan me four hundred and forty-two thousand dollars. You guys, so you got to listen to this. This is extremely important. This is how you build wealth, and this is how you're able to own rental property with none of your own money. So, it's very, very important here. Okay, so I'm I'm going to try to go slow. So if the appraised value of the property comes to $590,000, you time that by 75%, okay? Because that's how much the bank will loan to you for at 75%. So, which means the bank is willing to put a, a uh, loan me on this property. So I can put a new loan on this property <coughs> for $442,000. Now, what now? The money I have with the lender and my money, I have all in on it, was $350,000. So we take the new loan of $442,000 minus the $350,000. Okay, if you minus the $350,000, which means now the $280,000 or whatever it is. Okay, so there's a uh, so there's a two hundred. Um, let's just say $250,000, all right, hard money loan that's still on the property. So that 442 that the bank is going to loan me, that I'm going to put a new loan on that property. Now, you're going to take that, that money there, that 442. Some of that money is going to go pay off the hard money lender. I'm going to get the money that I have in the property, right? All my cash, I'm going to get back, okay? Uh, which means the $50,000 that I put down uh, to close on it, right? The, the 39000 plus uh, the... Uh, Fifty thousand. I'm gonna put into rehabbing the property, but but guess what? Also, too is I can get a I can get ninety two thousand dollars from the bank back to me. So they're gonna write. So they're gonna. I'm gonna get all my money back. I'm gonna pay off the harmony lender, and the bank will write me a check for ninety two thousand dollars. And guess what? This ninety two thousand dollars is you guys. Ninety two thousand dollars is tax free. So I don't have to pay any taxes on this $92,000. Um, okay, so let me slow this down for those of you. So, okay, so the bank is going to loan me on the property for $442,000 minus, three, minus $350,000 that I owe and half into the property. All right, that leaves me with $92,000. That $92,000, when, when you do a cash out refi, all right, it does not consider as an earned income. So when you do a cash out refi, whatever money that you getting back, 
you don't pay any taxes on it. Boom. And that's just, this is how the rich don't pay taxes. This is how they, they build wealth. All right. So now that I have the property, I don't know if I'm going to get, I don't know if I need to get the 92,000 back. I'm probably more focused on, you know, um, for, for me right now anyway. And this is something that the wife also wants to do. Um, you know, we already make uh, a lot of money from our other income already. So I don't know if I even want to take the 92,000 back or I should just put a new loan on it for the exact amount um, that I owe and the money I have in. So I can just put a new loan on the property instead of 442. I'll just tell the bank, hey, I'm just going to put um, 360,000 or 350,000, right? I'm getting the new loan from the bank. I'm just going to make it even. So that way I get my, my money I have into it back. I pay off the hard money lender. And now I'm getting a bigger, larger cash flow per month. And I don't owe on the property as much. <clears throat> All right. Now, when it comes down to owing, um, Owing on real estate, there's good debts and bad debts. As long as you don't over leverage, um, you should be completely fine. Um, it's just the wife; she just she likes to see, she likes to be, she likes to pay off our, our property. So our rentals, um, she doesn't want to, you know, owe on every single rental. She likes to have them pay off. All right, so that's 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 her. And I know there's other people that likes to leverage it where they don't need to pay it off just because the cash flow is enough for them to bring in to pay for the mortgage. They can still have the cash flow every single month. So, and the, and that money that they can use and go buy another property, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just sharing with you exactly what the wife wants to do. Okay. So I'm thinking probably for me, I'm just going to go and just basically even it out, maybe get, I don't know, 20,000 back or so. And then we're going to Airbnb it out and then make another $35,000 roughly per year all right by airbnb it out and so now i got no money into the property i'm pulling all my cash back out plus i can get ninety two thousand dollars tax free if i wanted to all right and this is the beauty about the burr strategy if you heard about the burr strategy it is buy rehab rent and then go to the bank do a cash out refi Take your money back and then go do it to another property. And you just do it over and over and over again. And you can do it as many times as you want. Um, so when we Airbnb this out, guess what? The Airbnb, the people that we're going to, you know, obviously rent it out. Th they are the one that's going to be paying off the debt, not us. All right. And that's why this is where we're talking about good debts versus bad debts. All right. You drive your car. Guess what? You're paying for your car. But when you decided to rent out your property, Right, the rent that you collected is going to be the one. The rent is going to be the um, the um, the money that is going to be paying off the debt. And guess what? After thirty years, right, you're going to put a thirty year loan on this property. After thirty years, I'm going to own this property free and clear. My cash flow is going to be even bigger. Um, and I haven't even talked about appreciation uh, of the property as well. Tax benefit. There's just so much. When it comes to real estate, especially when it comes to tax advantages um, and all that. So every single year, I get a depreciate the money that I'm going to make from it. Um, right. If uh, uh, if my uh, if my accountant is good, I probably end up have don't have to pay any taxes on it because you can depreciate rights off stuff that's on your property. All right. Very, very important, you guys. So anyways, that is my plan to do with this property. We're going to keep it Airbnb. I'll see how it goes. If not, then we're going to just flip it and then keep it as a long-term rentals. But at this time of my life, um, and with the amount of money that we're making from all of our other streams of income, um, you know, I'm looking into more holding now instead of wholesale. I'll probably just, I'll probably going to, you know, wholesale, you know, maybe, maybe wholesale eight, pro um, maybe wholesale um, I don't know, uh, six property and keep two. So I'm going to try to do plan on do a lot of keeping, but not keeping in every single area. We're probably just going to pick some prime spot, um, that we want to keep as far as an Airbnb, the wife only wants to buy, uh, in the location or the States that she would go to. So we're not going to buy in, in, in any States. We're just going to buy in States that we're going, uh, we go to. So after this one, I'm, I'm going to close on another piece of property that is in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, that's one of the locations that the wife likes to go is Arizona, Phoenix, Scottsdale's. Um, that's also where the, our real estate mastermind is as well. Um, so anyways, you guys, that is pretty much it. You know, you pull the list, 
And off-market deals are the best deals, especially right now. If you're trying to find something on market, it's extremely, extremely tough to find anything that is a really, really good deal and where the number actually makes sense. Um, so off-market is kind of where you want uh, to go. Not saying there's no deals on market. I think when you're trying to um, you know, make offer on, on the MLS on market, it just takes a little bit more work, all right, more time. Um, but when it's off market where you deal directly with the seller, it's actually a lot better. That's where you get the uh, uh, the best deal. So um, pretty much that is all I got for you. Okay, so if you have any questions, comment down below, um, and I'm more than happy to answer it. I hope this video honestly will add a lot of value to you. Um, we'll let you know. You know, I, I try to now do things. I'm I planning now to share more stuff with you about real estate or maybe crypto investing or NFT that I'm buying, like just basically business in general, um, just to open up a little bit more. Um, I, I, I already have over 900 videos just talk about wholesaling already, um, sharing with you exactly how to wholesale a house and all that. So I want to open up the channel a little bit more um, so that way you, you can learn um, from what I am doing. Um, as far as saying if you want to uh, uh, fix a pro fix and flip a property or maybe you want to try to do rentals, um, Airbnb and things like that, I'm going to try to document all of that and hopefully it will give you some kind of um, of a guidance or a blueprint so you can just copy and duplicate. Um, so anyways, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do, I do truly hope that it add value to you. And it's probably a little bit boring to some of you where I'm just standing right, I'm just sitting right here in front of the screen and I'm just blood talking on and on and on. So, um, but I honestly hope that it will add some value in some way. And if it does, please show your boy King Kong some love. Boom, smash that thumbs up. Um, if you're new to the channel, I want to give you a warm welcome. And I want to let you know that this family is all about action taker, massive action taker. Um, so if you are not an action taker, this is probably not for you. All right. I'm not, I'm, I'm here to educate and to share with you everything I've learned through the past 10 years being in real estate. Um, but nothing work if you don't, nothing work if you don't implement, nothing work if you don't take actions. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm always high on taking actions, um, uh, learn, and then you just got to take massive actions if you want to see results. Okay, and if you want to change your life and your bank account, you got to put in the W-O-R-K. So <clears throat> once again, if you're new, boom, smash that subscribe button. Welcome to the family, and I hope you enjoy this video. And comment down below maybe what other video that you like me to create. Um, just comment down below, and I will do my best. Um, if you have any questions you want to text me personally, you can at 1-206-208-0676. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care and...